Continuing on in section 5.5, .5, what is the graph of each function? So in A, we have x equals 4. So here, x equals 4, there's my intercept. Now, if we think about this, uh, it's going to be a vertical line because it's an x equals line. Uh, our slope is undefined, it's a straight up and down. But we can also think about it in terms of other points that make this equation true. Uh, well, this equation is true at the point 4, 4, for example, and at 4, 2, and at 4, negative 2. All of these points, if we substitute in a value here, make that equation true. The x value is 4 for all of them. So here, again, we're going to have a vertical line through 4. Arrows to show it continues. Try B. So here, my y-intercept is 0. Uh, that's also going to be any other point that has a y value of 0. So for example, right here we have 2, 0, and 6, 0, and negative 5, 0. All of those have a y value of 0. So those points make this true as well. So again, anytime we have a y equals a constant, it's going to be a horizontal line through the y-intercept at that value. And here it happens to be our x-axis. Give C a try. x equals negative 1. Well, my intercept here is at negative 1. And we want every point that makes that true. So at negative 1, 3. At negative 1, negative 4 at negative 1, 6. All of those have an x value of negative 1. All of these are true. Try D. Y equals 1. My y-intercept at 1 here, and we want every point that makes it true. So for example, 1, 1 has a y value of 0. 4, 1 has a y value of 0. Negative 5, 1 has a y value of 1. Sorry, my y value is 1 there for all of those. Uh, so y equals lines are always going to be horizontal through our intercept. And again, arrows to show it continues. In example 4, we're going to transition to standard form. So right now I have an equation y equals negative 3 seventh x plus 5. And um, we're going to write it in standard form using integers. It's in slope intercept form right now, y equals. We want to write it in standard form. Uh, so here we're going to get our variables on one side in alphabetical order equals to a constant. Uh, and it says using integers, which means no fractions, no decimals. So, uh, right now, I have a y on the left, a constant, and an x term on the right. I'm going to move my x to the other side. So, I'm going to add 3 sevenths x. Anytime I move from one side to the other, I have to do the opposite. And what this does is it gets my x term and my y term on the same side. So I don't want any x's left on the right, I want them all on the left. So right now it's in standard form, x first then y, but we want to use integers, which means we can't have this 7 in the denominator. We are going to clear our fraction, and we talked about this a little bit um, earlier this year when we were solving equations with fractions. We clear our fraction by multiplying every term by our least common denominator, which here is 7. So I multiply by 7, I multiply by 7, and I multiply by 7. And in order to keep it equivalent, we have to do the same thing to both sides. So if I uh, multiply the left side by 7, I also have to multiply the right side. Here, 7 divided by 7 is 1, those cancel. So I have 3x plus 7y equals 35. 
Keep in mind, if we would have moved our y to the right side and our 5 to the left side, uh, it would have been an equivalent equation. They just all would have been the opposite signs. So I would have ended up with negative 35 equals negative 3x minus 7y, uh, and that would have worked as well. Now I'll give this a try. We're going to write y minus 2 equals negative 1 third times the quantity x plus 6 in standard form using integers. So um, it's in point slope form right now. The first thing I'm going to do is simplify both sides the best that I can. So I'm going to distribute negative 1 third x minus 2. Now, I'm going to get all of my variables together on one side. So I do the opposite. Instead of being a negative one-third, I want a positive one-third. So I get one-third x plus y minus 2 equals negative 2. We could have also put it in the slope-intercept form first um, by adding a 2. Either way, it doesn't matter. Now that I have all my variables together on one side, I get my constants together. So I add 2. And if I change one side, I change both. 1 third x plus y equals, here I get 0. Now, I have it in standard form. All my variables together on one side, constant on the other. Here my constant is 0. Um, but they're not as an integer. So in order to get integers, I take my common denominator. Here that's a 3. And I multiply every single term on both sides. 3 divided by 3 is 1. So here I just get 1x, or just x, plus 3y equals 0. And that's our equation in standard form with integer coefficients. In example 5, a media download store sells songs for $1 each and movies for $12 each. You have $60 to spend. Write and graph an equation that describes the items you can purchase. What are three combinations of the number of songs and movies you can purchase? So here the things that we can buy are songs. I'm going to label that S. Um, and movies, which I'm going to use M. So, we have $60 to spend, which means the amount of money we spend on songs and the amount of money that we spend on movies can be equal to 60. So, we find the sum of those. Uh, here, the amount of money for songs is $1 each. So, it's 1 times my number of songs plus the number... Uh, amount for movies is $12 each. So it's 12 times M equals 60. So again, I can put the 1 with the S if I want to, but I don't have to. We have an equation in standard form. So we can find intercepts uh, to graph it. So uh, if I want to find out how many songs uh, if I spent all my money on songs, I'd plug a 0 in for M. So to find my S intercept, I plug a 0 in for M. So here I get S plus 12 times 0 equals 60. So if I spent no money on movies, I bought just songs, I could get 60 songs. This is if I get no movies. If I wanted to spend all of my money on movies and get zero songs, that's my M intercept. So I plug a zero in for S. Simplify. We're div multiplying, so we're going to go ahead and divide. And here I get five movies. And again, that's if I bought 
zero songs. So uh, now we can graph it. We have our intercepts. Uh, here it does not matter. Uh, songs doesn't necessarily depend on movies, and movies doesn't necessarily depend on songs. So uh, it doesn't matter which one we put where. I'm going to go ahead and put songs on the bottom. Which means I'll put movies on the side. Uh, here, I need to get all the way to 60 songs. And I have 12 spots. 60 divided by 12 means I'm going to count by fives here. And that's also where my intercept goes. Um, on my y-axis for movies, I only need to get to 5. So here I don't have to change my scale at all. And there is my intercept. I can go ahead and connect these. Um, I know that we can't buy a partial song. Um, but when we look here, uh, rather than making a 1 and a 2 and a 3 and a 4, okay, I'm going to connect these just so we can kind of see what we're looking at. Okay, so I went through and I made it a dotted line. Um, just so we can remind ourselves that it's not everything there. We want to know what are three combination of number of songs and movies that we can purchase. Well, um, we're going to look for anywhere that these meet. So, for example, if I spend, uh, sorry, if I buy one song, or sorry, one movie, that's $12, I can buy 48 songs. If I buy two movies, Twelve dollars. That means I have, or uh, twenty-four dollars. I have thirty-six dollars left. If I buy three movies, thirty-six dollars, I can buy twenty-four songs. If I buy four movies, uh, it's forty-eight dollars, and I have twelve left. So some options here for combinations of number of songs and movies. I could buy. Um, zero movies 60 songs I could buy one movie 48 songs two movies uh, 36 songs three movies 24 songs four movies 12 songs and five movies no songs those are all my combinations if I'm going to use that entire $60 Keep in mind, maybe I don't want to spend it all right now, so I could theoretically buy just 15 songs in one movie, for example, um, and have some left to use later, but we're talking if that entire gift card eventually gets used. Uh, these are all of our combinations. Now, give this a try. Suppose the same store raised its prices and charged $15 for each movie. What equation describes the number of songs and movies you can purchase for $60? So here I'm still looking for my number of songs, and my number of movies. So uh, the amount of money that I spend on songs and the amount of money that I spend on movies has to equal $60. Because we're talking uh, in terms of price here, I need to be priced down below. It says it's $15 for each movie. So my price for movies is 15 times my number of movies. And my price for song is still $1. That didn't change from the last example. So here I get 1S or just S plus 15M equals 60. Quick recap here. The standard form of a linear equation is AX plus BY equals C, where A, B, and C are real numbers and A and B are not both zero. And the standard form of a linear equation makes it possible to find our intercepts and draw graphs quickly. And that's all I have for section 5.5.